first thing you want to do before working on any electrically driven air compressor is to make sure the compressor itself is turned off. The power to the compressor is turned off and if possible that the air compressor is unplugged from the power service. Once you feel you're sure that you've turned off the power to the compressor and disconnected any additional power sources that might operate the air compressor, you want to use your multimeter or an amp probe to check to make sure that you are sure that there is no power being delivered to the air compressor. Use your multimeter to make sure that you don't have any operational power going to the compressor systems. Once you have verified this, you can move on to the next step of draining the tank or system pressure to make sure that the compressor is safe to operate. Once you verify that the air compressor is turned off and all electrical power has been disconnected from the air compressor, you want to make sure that you drain the system pressure from the tank of the compressor where you're working on. Make sure that this pressure has been drained down to zero. You can check by checking your tank pressure gauge to make sure that it reads zero. You can also check by pulling the tank safety valve to also make sure that there is no pressure left in the tank. The tank safety valve is typically located somewhere near the gauge. Once you've checked all these things, your compressor is now safe to work on. Now we are going to show you how to change the valves in any of our CA1 or CA2 series compressor pumps. This job is made easier by the valve tool that fits all CA1 and CA2 series compressor pumps. This valve tool mounts on any half inch drive socket set. First, we begin by removing the valve hold down caps. A half inch wrench is needed for this process. Once we have the valve hold down cap screws removed, we're next going to loosen and remove the crankcase vent. Now that the crate case vent is removed, we're going to remove the crate case vent fitting. With the crate case vent fitting removed, we're going to use our gasket scraper and a mallet to dislodge the valve cover caps. With these caps removed, you can now see the valve hold downs on all of the valves. If you have any gasket material left over, use a valve gasket scraper to remove any excess material. With the area clean, use your half inch wrench and your valve removal tool to remove the valve caps from the head.
We can now remove all the valve caps that are holding in the compressor valves. These first two valves right here are your low pressure intake valves. This valve right here is your low pressure discharge valve. This valve right here is your high pressure intake valve. And this valve right here is your high pressure discharge valve. Once we remove the valve hold down, we can remove the valve retainer. Once the valve retainer has been moved, the valve can simply be picked up out of, the, out of the head of the compressor pump. There's a copper valve seat gasket that if needed can be replaced as well. To put the valve back in, you simply put the valve copper gasket back on and its seat in the head and then insert the valve back into the head of the compressor pump. Replace the valve retainer ring and put the valve cap back in. This step is repeated five times for all the valves. It is not recommended to remove all five valve caps at once as the valves are different and do look different. Please make sure to only do one valve at a time as you're going. You're going to firmly tighten all the valve cap covers back down. Your plate. Lastly, we'll replace the gaskets for the valve caps. Tighten them back all down and you have completed a valve job on one of our CA1 or CA2 series pumps. On the CA2 series pumps, this pump has this same head again on the other side for the other two cylinders. You will just repeat the same process to change the valves on that pump.